In this video, I am going to show you how AGI 32 version 14 performs calculations to accommodate source color under mesopic vision. But before we start, a brief discussion of the basis of this calculation is important. The Illuminating Engineering Society recently approved Technical Memorandum 12, known as IES TM12-12, titled Spectral Effects of Lighting on Visual Performance at Mesopic Lighting Levels. This document contains guidelines for the application of light source spectrum, color, to low light situations. It's available at IES.org for 30 bucks. IES members get it for 21. Why is this important? Essentially, the color of light has an impact on how well we see. Specifically, TM12 deals with low light levels, defined as when the eye's adaptation luminance is less than 5 candelas per square meter. Remember, Luminance is light reflected off of a surface, which takes into account the reflectance of that surface. This is not illuminance, measured in foot candles or lux, which is light striking a surface. This distinction will be important to remember later. When the eye is adapted to this low level of light, the human visual system is operating in the mesopic range of light sensitivity. Let's bring up a quick reference slide, showing the standard V-lambda photopic sensitivity curve on the right, and the scotopic V prime lambda curve on the left. The visible spectrum in nanometers is across the bottom. Scotopic vision, which is essentially how we see in almost darkness, moonlight, starry nights, etc., is biased towards shorter wavelength spectra, blues, purples. This is pure rod vision, referring to the photoreceptors in the eye responsible for peripheral vision, contrast, and movement detection. Photopic vision, which applies to luminance levels higher than 5 candelas per square meter, this is interior lighting, shows peak sensitivity in the longer wavelengths, such as green to yellow. Photopic vision is mostly cone vision, those receptors concentrated in the fovea responsible for color. Mesopic vision is the area in between where both the rods and the cones are functioning. This is primarily the domain of outdoor lighting, which is why we're here. Research has shown that whiter light sources, those with a balanced spectrum, produce better visibility when the eye is operating in the mesopic range. And now, IES document TM12-12 provides us with a way to quantify just how much better. When we perform lighting calculations using AGI-32, or any other program for that matter, we are utilizing photometric methods that are all derived from the lumen. That old familiar measure of light energy is based on the photopic light sensitivity curve. This means that all of your lighting calculations are also based on photopic light sensitivity. By introducing a method which we can correlate our calculations to mesopic vision instead, TM12 and AGI32 can help you evaluate the difference in effective lighting results due to the color of the light source. There is, of course, a substantial amount of research behind TM12, and it is not our mission to present it here. For a more in-depth discussion, Lighting Analyst does offer a webinar to discuss the bigger picture, and I encourage you to attend if not already familiar with the concepts. Schedules are posted at www.agi32.com. Okay, so let's move forward and see what steps are necessary in AGI32 to observe the mesopic effect. We will discuss some of the specifics and caveats as we go. Step 1. The first thing we need to do in AGI 32 is to assign an SP ratio to the defined luminaires. What is an SP ratio, you ask? This is the ratio of scotopic light output to photopic light output across the spectral power distribution of the luminaire. Here are a few examples. High pressure sodium. Metal halide and LED. SP ratio information should be requested from the luminaire manufacturer. If unavailable, you can use Annex C from TM12 that contains some typical SP ratios. Here's Annex C. It is important to understand that the SP ratio is unique to each source's spectral power distribution. So for LEDs, it will be very important to obtain the correct numbers from the supplier, as SPD curves can vary widely. The TM12 Annex C lists white LED at 4300K. 
as having an SP ratio of 2.04. They also list a warm white LED, no CCT specified, coming in at 1.21. It is important to note that the CCT number cannot be used to determine the SP ratio. While they generally correlate as higher CCT sources have higher SP ratios, keep in mind that it is possible for two sources to have the same CCT but very different spectral power makeup. Okay, so let's use Annex C and enter an SP ratio for our LED products of 2.04 and our HPS products of 0 0.63. There is a caveat. At this time, you cannot run a mesopic calculation with two different SP ratio sources. All luminaires must have the same SP ratio. This means we can run our parking lot with HPS and get results, then run it again with LED and get separate results, but we could not include, for example, separate wall packs with a different source. Alright, so onward to step two. Because the calculation of mesopic effects depends on an adaptation luminance, we must have a surface created in AGI32 that we can place calculation points on. In TM12, the adaptation luminance is considered the diffuse luminance at each calculation point. So, the metric is not necessarily observer-centric, or you can assume the observer is located and adapted to the luminance at each calculation point. So, let's put down a single planar object beneath the site. Planar object. Let's set the reflectance to 20%. Make it a polygon. quickly create an object underneath. So onward to step 3. Next we'll use AGI32's automatic placement command to place calculation points on the surface. A surface is required for mesopic calculations as this is a luminance based metric. Remember Mesopic effects are limited to adaptation luminances below 5 candelas per meter squared. The next step is important, so watch carefully. From within the automatic placement dialog, we will select the calculation type. From the menu, select Photopic Mesopic. From there, we want to set our decimals to 2. This is important. We're dealing with small numbers, so we don't want rounding to diminish the effects. Now, verify your point spacings, 10 by 10, and click OK. By the way, did you notice that I did not turn the calculation points on? They actually did it by themselves. That's a little change in AGI 32 version 14 to make it easier to get in and out of the dialog. Pretty nice. OK, so let's go to Project Manager and see what we've done. Notice we have four calculation planes. We have mesopic illuminance, mesopic luminance, photopic illuminance, and photopic luminance. Notice the visibility is set for mesopic illuminance. The metric is based on luminance, and we calculate luminance. We then back calculate illuminance from that metric. All four grids are provided as it's informative to be able to compare, and we'll see that in a second. Plus, if you ever need to try and field verify your computations, you will need the photopic illuminance numbers. So here's our HPS layout after calculation in full radiosity mode. Remember, we need to consider the object reflectance. Thus, full radiosity mode is required. Here we have statistics for all four calculation grids. Let's have a look. Remember the HPS source has a low SP ratio of 0 0.63. This means the photopic portion of the spectral power of the HPS source is higher than the scotopic, and we saw that. Here's a reminder slide. 
Looking at our HPS statistics, we see the mesopic or effective illuminance here is actually less than the normal photopic numbers we are used to seeing, average of 1.93 versus a photopic average of 1.98. Notice the maximums are the same, 8.36 and 8.36. Why is that? Well, remember, mesopic effects are more pronounced in low light situations. For luminance levels over 5 candelas per square meter, let's look at our photopic luminance, 5.73, mesopic effects are negligible. We are no longer seeing in the mesopic range. However, now let's look at some minimums. The difference is evident, there's less light. Mesopic illuminance minimum, 0 0.14 foot candles. Looking at the photopic minimum, 0 0.16. The uniformity ratios are of course worse as well for the low SP ratio source. This tells us clearly that we do not see as well under the spectral distribution of the HPS source in low light conditions. Fair enough. What happens when we perform calculations with a source that has a higher SP ratio? All right, well, behind the scenes, we're going to go swap out our HPS luminaires for their LED counterparts. So here's our calculated results with the LED luminaires. Remember, the LED luminaire is a white LED 4300K from TM12 Annex C. The SP ratio is 2.04. Remember the SP ratio for HPS was 0 0.63. This means that particular LED spectrum has much more energy in the scotopic portion of the spectrum, basically twice as much as in the photopic, SP equal something slightly greater than 2, 2.04. Comparing average illuminance, we have mesopic or effective illuminance at 1.72 versus photopic at 1.57. This is a 10% improvement. How about the minimum? Well, we have 0 0.26 photopically versus 0 0.32 under mesopic conditions. This is a larger spread, which will have a major impact on the uniformity ratios for mesopic results. Notice with the LED luminaire, the maximum luminance is lower than 5 candelas per square meter, 2.59. The mesopic effect is evident for the LED layout. Note that the HPS layout provides an adaptation luminance higher than the mesopic threshold, which diminishes the effect. Should the adaptation luminance for the HPS layout be similar to the LED, the mesopic effect would be more evident for the HPS layout, making it even worse. Comparing our HPS and LED layouts, they are identical in terms of luminar quantity and wattage for our example. We can observe the mesopic effect and understand why it is viewed with such importance. Photopic results show the HPS layout to have an average of almost two foot candles, where the LED is only 1.57. But mesopic results show the HPS average to diminish slightly to 1.93, while the LED rises to 1.72, about a 10% rise. Mesopic effects increase under lower light levels so the minimum figures can improve substantially, having a definite impact on uniformity ratios. Does this confirm your intuition as a lighting observer? I think it does mine. Summarizing. AGI 32 requires these steps to compute mesopic effect. The SP ratio of the source, preferably from the manufacturer. If not available, use Annex C of TM12. Be sure to document your sources in your project summary. Calculations can currently only be done for all sources using the same SP ratio, so no mixing of sources. Because this is a luminance-based metric, you must have a surface for the ground plane with accurate reflectance value. Apply the calculation points with automatic placement and select photopic mesopic calculation type. Set the number of decimals to 2. All four calculation point grids are created. 
Illuminance is back calculated from diffuse luminance. Mesopic illuminance is visible by default. You can switch calculation point visibility using Project Manager. Calculate using full radiosity mode. What do we know about SP ratios? SP ratios less than 1 will yield lower mesopic or effective luminance and illuminance. SP ratios greater than 1 will yield greater mesopic or effective luminance illuminance. So, it follows that at an SP ratio equal to 1, there is no difference. No mesopic effect. CCT and Kelvins cannot be used to compute SP ratio. The two metrics agree but are only loosely related. What else? Mesopic effects are valid for luminance levels less than 5 candelas per square meter. This means that you cannot apply this method to interiors other than perhaps emergency lighting or any other application where the eye is not in the mesopic range. What about roadway lighting? This is a deep discussion. Currently the TM12 approach is not intended for roadways. Some research shows that at speeds greater than 25 miles per hour, 40 kilometers per hour, vision is foveal with minimal rod involvement which negates the mesopic effect. At any rate, roadway lighting will need to be observer centric with potentially different considerations for the calculation of adaptation luminance on which the metric is based. This is in the hands of the IES Roadway Lighting Committee. The most effective application of this method is for site and area lighting where consideration of mesopic effects for white light sources could yield more economical layouts and less power consumed. So there you have the application of mesopic lighting in AGI 32 version 14. Thanks for sitting in.